Orania understood that we Afrikaners needed to move to a place where we can be in our own area majority. Yeah. If you look at Afrikaners as a as a nation in terms of the bigger South Africa, we're maybe yeah. two million in terms of a sixty million plus country. Yeah. So we don't have a lot of political influence, but in our own area, we can decide what language do we want in our schools, yeah. what what religion do we want to practice and how do we want to do things. Sure. And that we can only do if we are majority in our own area. Sure. So so that's why these people understood those things and they said, let's move to an area which which have almost no inhabitants, yeah. which is empty, which is harsh, where people don't want to live and let's create something there. So you say initially this town was built so that uh, skilled people could come and help build a dam? Yes. That's, a, that's the prehistory of Urania before sure. it was, yeah. And then yeah. it became a ghost town after the dam was yeah. built. People moved, etc. The land project, was left. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how big is this land and how much was it bought for at the time? Mm. Uh, so the town at that stage, I think, uh, was 800 hectares. 800 hectares? 800 hectares. Okay, a hectare is, they normally say one rugby field or so. Yeah, 100 meters by 100 meters. Okay, Yeah. 800 hectares. Yeah, 800 sure. hectares. And that was bought for 1 million 50,000 rands. 1 million 50... This is obviously from Karl Bosov and Chris Yester. They had yes. money. They, 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 they got the money. They went to supporters of this idea and people chipped in. You know, It, it wasn't was, from their pockets? It wasn't from their pockets, no. No, no, no. Well, they obviously helped. Sure. But everyone gave what they could give. So I'm not sure about spe specifically how it worked. And people sure. then got shares in the, in the community so they could resell land later on and so on. But... Um, for investors at that stage, sure. I don't. They didn't make a lot of money. Yeah. Rania is now worth a lot more with the infrastructure and the development and things that's happening here. But at that stage, uh, people just put in money and they hoped for the sure. best. You know, there's a, there's rumors because I, if I'm not mistaken, um, Dr. Karl Bosov is a doctor. Uh, professor. Professor Karl Bosov is one of the descendants of Fervut. Yes. So there were rumors that no, this was a Fervut project, and Karl Bosov obviously had the money mm. and he bought this piece of land. Mm. Uh, out of racism, etc. Yeah. So the first myth, I guess, that's being passed yeah. is yeah. it wasn't necessarily his yeah. money. It was yeah. ordinary folk believing yeah. in an idea and chipping yeah. in. You must remember that Fervur died in 66. Okay. Uh, long, long before the, let's call it the second Urania realized, long before it. Sure. So it was 66, 76, 86, 91. Yeah. And um, um, <laughs> it's quite easy to see in the way that, especially in the pioneer years of Urania, yeah. But now, later on, the way people live, they live simple lives. There's not a lot of money and riches here. Yeah. Um, it's not, um, if you if you wanted to make good business, Urania would not have been the place at that stage. Sure. It would have been better investments. If they had a lot of money, it would have been better investments Somewhere just in else. terms of commercial value. But, um, so no, P Professor Karl Bosov and uh, Dr. Chris Uist and so on, I'm sure they gave what they had, sure. but the money was raised through events and through people chipping in, sure. getting shares. Yeah. One million fifty thousand eight hundred hectares. We fast forward like over 30 years now. Do you have any idea how big the town is now yeah. and maybe an estimated worth? Estimated worth, I won't be able to help you if it's quite complicated with all the infrastructure, but maybe we should get an economist and try and to put a, a you know, value on that. But sure. what I can tell you is that it's just shy of 10,000 hectares, depending on what you count. 10,000. So the town has expanded over time. It's expanded. The, the guys what, have bought more land. Yes. What happens is people buy more, more land and then voluntarily make that part of Urania. Hectic. Okay. Uh, so there's a lot of choices when you move to Urania. How much service delivery do you want? Or... Do you do you want to pay more um, municipal levies and get more services, or do you want to move into like the more rural parts of Urania, pay very little levies and sure. do all your services yourself, sure. get your own solar power? So, sure. so it's a bit of options. But if you look at it on an umbrella, uh, it's all part of the Urania, the Greater Urania. Okay, it's about I would say about ten thousand hectares.